friend, Brad Christopherson, here again with another first listener review. Um, this is one I was looking really forward to as well. Um, it is the uh, the Doors Live at the Matrix, and it's the Live at the Matrix. The original Masters is what it's called, <clears throat> and uh, actually 1967, the original Masters. And the reason it is called the original Masters this time around, because this has been released mostly, not all entirely, but mostly, is because um, they did a bunch of these songs back in 2008, I believe it was, and then they found out after it was uh, released that it wasn't from the original source recordings, and it was like third generation actually at that point. And so this is all supposed to be from the original masters and basically what this concert is is the doors or like in between they're just about to release i think their second album <clears throat> please correct me if i'm wrong because doors history i've got a lot of books on the doors i've listened to the doors since i was like a little kid and they there's a lot of stuff that goes on with these guys and there's i've got tons of bootlegs and i actually have this bootleg i don't even remember where i got it from but i've had this bootleg of the whole entire thing forever Except for the two songs are still that they have on this one are missing from that bootleg. So um, basically, what this was is it's uh, they did a five-day run at a club that was owned by Peter Abram and uh, Marty Balin, who was part of Jefferson Airplane. And Peter Abram recorded all the shows. And from what I have read, these were like not a whole lot of people at these shows. And there's multiple sets throughout the days. You know, two sets, three sets. Um, Stuff like that going on. Don't remember <clears throat> which you know days um, they had multiple, you know, the more than two sets. But uh, anyway, there's a lot of a lot of shows. And of course, they weren't going to be really long sets, but there were multiple sets where they played most of their songs from the first <clears throat> and their second album. And uh, so, basically, what it boils down to is you get whatever was salvaged from those tapes. Not every single set was recorded. <clears throat> and um, or and if it was, it didn't survive all these years. Don't really know the story there, but you get some sporadic ones. Most of these are from the seventh and the tenth. And uh, the two new songs is one called "Bags Groove," which I still have not been able to listen to yet because they only included that on the seven-inch single. And my turntable is buried; it's not even hooked up right now. And I didn't just hook it up just to listen to that song. Maybe at some point it will. I don't know. <clears throat> and uh, then there's one that's just called All Blues. It's on the first uh, CD. And um, that's the only ones I haven't actually heard before. So most of this, like I said, the first uh, couple of discs are from the first set and the second set uh, from the first day. And then there's actually a third set on that uh, first day that they include. I don't know if it's the whole thing, but there's only like five songs. <laughs> so... And then there's a like a little bit of a ending of the part of the end, which they don't even know what day that one was from, and it's not even the whole song. And then um, March 10th, you get the first and second set, and that's pretty much all there was that survived or that they're releasing here. And supposedly this is everything that um, is available from those recordings. So if anybody has any other knowledge than that, please let me know. As far as I know, that's. <clears throat> kind of what they did. Some of this stuff has been released on other things like box sets. They did some uh, record store day stuff where they released <clears throat> like 15 of these songs for one of these record store days back in 17 and 18, I believe. So, anyway, um, everybody knows what the, the doors sound like. The doors sound um, good live I, I even on their bad days they sound good Jim Morrison always gave it all even when he was like totally messed up he sounded great I just think he's got one of those great bluesy feeling he got into the music those guys played great um, and this is like nothing different than anything I've heard on, on multiple bootlegs that I've had as far as their performance goes um, so the main thing I wanted to check out was the sound quality because that's how they're advertising this is they have the original masters so <clears throat> took out the old bootleg listened to it and compared it and the first thing i noticed is yeah the mastering is way better uh it's the, the volume i know volume is kind of like a a trick sometimes just because something's louder sometimes people think it sounds better it's just the way our brain is programmed 
So first thing I notice it's louder. <clears throat> so then I'm like, is it clear? Yes, it's definitely clear. So I think in the bootleg that I have, which I don't even know where I got it from, um, somebody gave it to me. It's a copy of a bootleg. So I mean, that's how bootlegs work, I guess. So I don't even know where I got it from. I've had it for years. <clears throat> and uh, so that might have not been a, off the first generation, obviously. Although it was all the songs except for the, the two new ones. So I don't know where I got it. But the, So I compared it to the 2008 recording which has been, you know, mastered and stuff, but it wasn't mastered from the original masters. So, yeah, it is a little bit clearer than that. Um, you can tell that if you if you listen to them side by side, you can tell. If you don't listen to them side by side, you're probably not going to notice any big difference, but there is a slight difference. It's a little bit clearer. It's not, a, there's a little bit of hiss that you can pick up um, between songs. But other than that, it's not a huge difference. So, at least to my ears. Everybody's got their own opinion on the stuff, and everybody's got different sets of ears. So, <clears throat> for me, it was worth having it. Just because here it is, it's all together, um, released the right way, not on a bootleg. And, um, you know, it's got all the extra stuff with it. And uh, at some point, I will get to listen to the 7 inch. So, for me, it was worth having it. I love listening to the doors, it's fun to put them on it's like a journey anytime they do a, a concert and it's funny because there's really not a whole lot of cl uh, crowd noise in between songs because i guess there wasn't a whole lot of people at these shows so that, that's a little strange you hear something that's like this impressive amazing performance and then you're like <laughs> so it's like it's a little strange but other than that musically amazing to listen to um love the doors um if you're a doors fan definitely worth owning um Anyway, anyway, so tell me what you guys think of this one, if you guys have made the comparisons yourself or not, what you think, um, what you think of the new songs, that uh, if you've had a chance to listen to them, which I have not checked out, the Bags Groove one yet, the other one's okay, whatever, I could have lived without it quite honestly, but it's still, it's the Doors, um, it's the Doors, you gotta have it, I guess, if you're a completist, you gotta have it, so... Anyway, that's the way they always get us with these things. They had one or two songs, and they get us every time, because they know we're going to buy it. But anyway, uh, like, share, subscribe, and all that fun stuff. Until next time, we'll see you.